judges. We are from Christchurch Secondary School. I am Poon Kurli and these are my group members. We are doing a project on the effectiveness of some water plants in removing nitrate ions from the water systems. We will now start off our presentation with a small skit. The school operational manager stands by the school pond looking frustrated. Just then, four students walk past the pond. Ew! What's that green stuff in there? There are algae, which nutrient inputs such as nitrogen stimulates the growth of algae which changes the lake of steam's environment as their population increases. Algae also increase release nutrients that could lead to undesirable consequences. What could happen to the living creatures in there then? The water becomes depleted in oxygen. When many algae die and decompose, much oxygen is consumed by those decomposers. It will result in death of fishes that need high level of dissolved oxygen. So, how are you going to handle this problem? There's absence of water plant in our pond. It's the best that we can treat the wastewater. It's very difficult to control this problem as I can't find a suitable water plant to ease the problem. We will do something about it then. See ya! During chemistry class... Hey Madam Santa, did you notice the algae growth problem in our school pond? Oh, I noticed it. I've already planned the experiment and needed some students. Do you guys want to help me? Yes! yes. The purpose of removing nitrate ions is to reduce eutrophication. Eutrophication can be caused by the excessive amounts of nitrogen and phosphorus in the water, leading to rapid growth of algae and other cellular organisms like protists. On top of this, algal bloom can produce toxins which are then released into the water. This excessive growth of algae affects the water quality and other aquatic life in the water by covering the surface. Plants play a vital role in the uptake of excess nitrogen from the water bodies. We choose to work on this project to determine a suitable water plant to put in our school's new fish pond with the humming, the fishes or any other living organism living within it, and at the same time, reducing the rate of algae growth. Now I shall pass it to Parati. The procedures. Firstly, we injected 40 parts per million of nitric ions into each of the six containers. Each type of water plants were placed in their respective containers. The six containers served as a control. 50 ml of water sample from each container were collected after 1, 3, 5 days and was kept in the refrigerator till analysis was done. Water samples were analyzed for the uptake of nitric ions using ion chromatography. Results were tabulated and analyzed. Now I will pass on to Pungwari. For the findings, we used two methods to find our results. Firstly, ion chromatography and secondly, UV visible vessel spectrophotometry. We use ion chromatography as our main method. Now I shall highlight the main main points in main results when finding for the results using the ion chromatography. Please take note that the standard run of the nitrate showed a retention time of 6.75 minutes. For the water hyacinth, on day 1, the concentration of nitrate was 25.756 parts per million. On day 3, it was 22.742 parts per million. On day 5, it was 2.707 parts per million. The other plants showed a negative results. We, were, we, we could not analyze the results for the control as we were unable to get a value for the concentration. Hence, we compared the estimated height and the area and it remained fairly constant. Now, I shall pass it to Ellie. By looking at the percentage change, we can deduce that water hyacinth is the most effective in absorbing nitrate ions as it has the biggest drop in con concentration of nitrate ions by 93.23% in the water and this was consistent. Second in place is the water lettuce, whose concentration showed a drop of 58.48%. However, three days later, the, concentra the concentration started to increase, perhaps due to the plants starting to die. When they start to die, they tend to release ions into the water body. As for the dark weed, money plant and giant salvinia, they are not considered as good absorbers as their results were not consistent. After the entire investigation, we found that water hyacinth is the most effective in absorbing nitrate ion in the water as compared to the other plants. When it is grown in ponds, it helps to keep the pond clean by reducing algae growth and also improves the appearance of the pond and it is readily available at low cost. 
This knowledge will be shared with other schools or communities which has a problem with the algae growth in their water body. Now I'll pass it on to Chloe. Conclusion is that among the five water plants we have studied, water hyacinth is the most effective in absorbing nitric ions from the water. Water lettuce is then the second concentration as it showed a big drop in, con in the concentration of nitric ions until it started to die. This result leads us in learning that floaters such as water lettuce and water hyacinth are better in decreasing the concentration of nitrate in water samples. This could be due to their structure and root system. Hence, we can conclude that these floaters can be grown to control the water quality. However, floaters can grow rapidly which could lead to their overpopulation and result in blockage of sunlight to pass through to the bottom of the water body. We use lead 2 nitrate to observe the tolerance of each plant to pytotoxicity. However, due to the inaccessibility to atomic absorption spectrophotometer, we were unable to extend our study to determine the uptake of lead 2 ions by the plant. Thank, Thank you! you.